November 2nd, 2011, police arrested a 45-year-old Russian man. Inside his apartment and garage, they found dolls. 26 of them. Dolls made from human cadavers. Anatoly Moskvin was born in the city of Gorky, now known as Nizhny Novgorod, Russia's fourth largest city and a center of military research and production that remained closed to foreigners for most of the Soviet era. From an early age, Anatoly had a fascination with the dead and the afterlife, a passion that would ultimately lead to his downfall. As a young boy, Anatoly had a traumatic experience that would shape his obsession with death. According to an article Moskvin published shortly before his arrest in the weekly paper Necrologies, he claims that his fascination began on October 26, 1979. At the age of 13, he witnessed the funeral procession of an 11-year-old girl named Natasha Petrova. He claims that on his way home from school, he was stopped by men in black suits who dragged him to the coffin containing the girl's body and forced him to kiss her lifeless lips. He said, I kissed her once, then again, then again. As the ceremony came to a close, the girl's mother approached him, holding two wedding rings in her hand. Without hesitation, she slipped one ring onto Moskvin's finger and the other onto the lifeless hand of her daughter. The bizarre ritual had reached its chilling climax. This haunting incident left a deep impression on Anatoly, and sparked an intense curiosity about death and the afterlife. The experience also made him develop a deep interest in magic ceremonies. Whether or not the story is true, one thing is clear. Anatoly Moskvin's disturbing thoughts went unchecked for more than three decades. From the moment he kissed the dead girl in the coffin, Anatoly Moskvin's fascination with death and the afterlife only grew stronger. As a schoolboy, he began wandering through cemeteries with his friends, exploring the eerie silence of the graveyards and studying burial customs and rituals. This macabre interest would later inform his studies at Moscow State University, where he graduated from the philological faculty and became a well-known academic figure. His main areas of interest were Celtic history and folklore, subjects that often blurred the lines between life and death. Moskvin's advanced degree in Celtic studies allowed him to delve deeper into these dark and mysterious realms, fueling his fascination with the afterlife even further. But Moskvin's curiosity was not limited to Celtic studies. He was a master of languages, speaking over 13 different tongues, and a many times published scholar. His studies of linguistics and cultures around the world provided him with a unique perspective on the afterlife, allowing him to explore the similarities and differences between death and dying rituals across different cultures and societies. He kept a personal library of over 60,000 books and documents. For Moskvin, the study of death was not just an academic pursuit. It was a way of life, a consuming passion that would ultimately lead him down a dark and twisted path. His fascination with death and the afterlife may have started innocently enough, but it would eventually consume him completely, leading to a life of unspeakable horror and tragedy. In 2005, Oleg Ryabov, a fellow academic and publisher, commissioned Moskvin to summarize and list the dead in more than 700 cemeteries located in 40 regions of Nizhny Novgorod. During the following two years, Moskvin claimed that he had gone on foot to inspect 752 different cemeteries. He claims to have walked upwards of 30 kilometers, or 18 miles, every day. During these travels around the region, Moskvin claims he drank from puddles for water and spent nights on haystacks and at abandoned farms. Sometimes even slept in the cemeteries themselves. He even went so far as to spend a night in a coffin being prepared for a funeral. This strange and bizarre work remains unpublished to this day, though Alexei Yesin, the editor of the weekly paper Necrologies, 
which Moskvin regularly contributed, has described it as unique and priceless. In 2009, locals of the Nizhny Novgorod region began to discover the graves of their loved ones desecrated and sometimes even completely dug up. For nearly two years, the investigation of these violated graves led nowhere. Graves continued to be desecrated and no one knew by who or why. Finally, a break in the investigation came and Anatoly Moskvin was caught on November 2, 2011 at a cemetery. Eight police officers went to his apartment and what they found shocked them to their core. The then 45-year-old Anatoly Moskvin lived with his parents in a small apartment. Reports describe him as a loner and something of a pack rat. Inside, authorities found life-sized and doll-like figures that resembled antique dolls. They wore fine and varied clothing. Some wore knee-high boots, others had makeup on. Except these were not dolls. They were the mummified corpses of human girls. There were also photographs and plaques taken off of gravestones, doll-making manuals, and maps of local cemeteries strewn about the apartment. Police even discovered that the clothes worn by the mummified corpses were the clothes in which they were buried. Inside some of the dolls or mummies, there were also personal belongings and clothing. One contained a hospital tag with the date and the cause of the girl's death. A dried human heart was found inside another body. When police moved one of the bodies, it played music, as if on cue. Inside the chests of many of the dolls, Moskvin had embedded music boxes. Anatoly Moskvin's collection of mummified girls came to be because of a unique and peculiar reason. He stated he felt great sympathy for dead children and thought that they could be brought back to life by either science or even black magic. As previously stated, Moskvin was an expert on Celtic culture, and he learned that the ancient druids slept on graves in order to communicate with the spirits of their dead. Moskvin began searching for obituaries of recently deceased children. When he found an obituary that spoke to him, he would sleep on that child's grave in order to determine if the spirit wished to be brought back to life by him. Anatoly also claimed that he had been doing this for around 20 years. He also claims to never have dug up a grave without the permission of the child within. But as he grew older, and it became physically painful for him to sleep outside on the graves, he began bringing the bodies home where it would be more comfortable to sleep near them and listen to their wishes. Moskvin believed and hoped the spirits of the dead would be more willing to speak in a safe and welcoming home, and that they might be easier to hear when they were no longer underground. After exhuming the corpses, Moskvin researched mummification theories and techniques in an attempt to preserve the bodies. Anatoly Moskvin said that he would stuff the decayed corpses with rags. Then he would wrap nylon tights around their faces or fashion doll faces onto them. He would also insert buttons or toy eyes into the girls' eye sockets so that they could watch cartoons with him. He dressed them up and tried to give them functional bodies to be used when he eventually discovered a way to bring them back to life. These details made the bodies appear to be large homemade dolls, which prevented their discovery. It's unclear if each doll contained a full set of human remains. Anatoly Moskvin said that he mostly loved his girls, though there were a few dolls in his garage that he claimed to have grown to dislike. Moskvin often regretted that he never had children, and at one point attempted to adopt a young girl against the wishes of his parents. Anatoly's application was declined due to his low income. Moskvin has always denied any sexual attraction to the dolls and instead considered them to be his children. He spoke to and interacted with the corpses, sang songs to them, watched TV with them, and even held birthday parties and celebrated holidays for their benefit. Moskvin was aware that he was committing a crime, but felt the dead children were calling out to be rescued and believed that rescuing the children was more important than obeying the law. Anatoly Moskvin's parents claimed to know nothing of the true origin of his dolls. Elvira, his then 76-year-old mother said, We saw these dolls, but we did not suspect there were dead bodies inside. We thought it was his hobby to make such big dolls and did not see anything wrong with it. Anatoly's parents were often away, leaving Moskvin alone in the small apartment. 
Their neighbors were shocked when the discovery was made. They said that Moskvin was quiet and that his parents were nice people. They admit there was a rancid smell that emanated from their apartment whenever the door was opened, but they chalked that up to the stink of something that rots in the basements of all the local buildings. In all, authorities discovered 26 life-size dolls in Anatoly Moskvin's apartment. They ranged in age from 3 to 25. One corpse he kept for nearly nine years, although only 26 bodies were discovered in his home. Moskvin was suspected of desecrating as many as 150 graves. Moskvin was charged with a dozen crimes, all of which dealt with the desecration of graves. The Russian media called him the Lord of the Mummies. After a psychiatric evaluation, it was determined that Moskvin had a form of paranoid schizophrenia. In a hearing on the 25th of May, 2012, the Leninsky District Court of Nizhny Novgorod deemed Moskvin unfit to stand trial releasing him from criminal liability. He was instead sentenced to a psychiatric clinic. In September 2018, Moskvin's doctor stated that he was no longer dangerous and petitioned the court to release him. However, in February 2019, a subsequent psychiatric evaluation found that it was too early to release Moskvin, and the hospital withdrew the petition. The Moskvin has refused to apologize to the parents, and during a hearing in which he sought to be released from the psychiatric hospital to care for his elderly mother and live with a new girlfriend, he said, These girls are girls. There are no parents in my view. I don't know any of them. And, besides, they buried their daughters, and this is where I believe their rights over them finished. Anatoly's story is a chilling reminder of the power of obsession and the dangerous consequences of unchecked curiosity. If you'd like to support the channel, I just started a Patreon. Link is in the description. My dream is to create full-time, and I believe quite a few of my videos will get demonetized due to the subject matter. Still, I want to tell these stories and not be too confined when I create for you guys. All I can offer right now is my great appreciation and mention in future videos. Also, the fact that you are an awesome person for supporting a human being working towards their dream. Thank you for watching.